This is the first week of our brand new series called The God I Never Knew. And we're spending uh, three weeks on understanding the Holy Spirit. And, and so um, my goal this morning and for the next couple weeks that we're in this series is to paint a clear picture of who Holy Spirit is. And to try to remove all of the um, things that we've seen, maybe we've been shown, and to just get a clear picture of, of who the Holy Spirit is. And so I'm very excited about that. So uh, the verse uh, for, for today, the theme verse is found in John chapter 14. Now I do want to say this before I read, that John chapter 14, 15, and 16, most uh, scholars believe this was uh, this in case the last 12 to 15 hours of Jesus's life. And so Jesus, he's hanging and he's hanging up, he's hanging out, he's hanging, he's not hanging, uh, not yet at least, right? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> God, I don't even know. My gosh. So, so he's hanging out with his closest friends, his closest um, compadres, amigos. They're, they're having a dinner party. Again, this is the last 12 to 15 hours of his life, and have you ever been to a dinner where there was just drama, and you, it was just drama? Come on. Hello, Thanksgiving. Hello, Christmas. <laughs> and and so, so here they are. They're hanging out. They're at the dinner party, and just like everything is like, it, it's just going crazy. So within this time that they're eating dinner, here's a couple things that, that have gone happen, that, that has happened. Uh, Jesus, he, he washed the disciples' feet. So they're eating dinner, and Jesus is like, hey, I want to wash your feet awkward, right? Like, or maybe that's just me. Maybe I just think that's awkward. And you guys would appreciate that. I don't know. Um, so, so, so they're eating dinner. Jesus washes their feet. He also identifies during dinner the person that's going to betray him. That's awkward. So awkward. On top of that, uh, uh, he, on top of that, uh, Jesus, he looks at this guy, his, his buddy Peter, and he said, Peter, you're going to betray me. Oh, so awkward. And this is kind of the flow of dinner. It's like up and down. We're hanging out with Jesus, and then he's laying into us. And it's, it's just this crazy dinner going on. But within that dinner time, he, here's what Jesus, is, Jesus says in, in uh, verse 16 and verse 17. He says this, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate. So, so he, he's, he's letting the disciples know that, he's not, that Jesus is not going to be around to hang out with them forever. Who will never leave you. So Jesus is like, hey, I might leave you, but the person that's coming is not going to leave you. Verse, or the next slide. He is the Holy Spirit who leads into all truth. The world cannot receive him because it isn't looking for him and doesn't recognize him. But you know him because he lives with you now and later will be in you. But you know him because he lives with you now and later will be in you. So Jesus is saying, He's here now, but when I leave, he's not just going to be around you. He can actually live inside of you. That's some good news. And so um, we're going to look at this, break it down a little bit. And this morning, if you're taking notes, I want to talk to you from the subject, who is the Holy Spirit? Who is the Holy Spirit? Let's pray, and then we will get started. Father, we love you. God, I thank you for today. I thank you for this opportunity that we have to come together and to learn about you. God, right now, I pray that you would help me to paint the truest picture of who the Holy Spirit is. God, we don't want anything that has been man-made. We just want to see the Holy Spirit in his truest form. God, we're asking that when we leave here today, that we would leave even, just, even if it's just a little bit better. God, no one in this room has... 70 minutes to waste. And so let us leave different. Let us leave changed. Not for our own benefit, but so that we can change the world around us. God, we love you so much. In Jesus' name, 
And God, I pray for the Niners. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. They need to stop getting injured. That's all I'm saying. Uh, so I, I need to kind of set this up for you because if I don't set it up, you're going to be like, John, you're a horrible dad. Okay, so, um, so how many of you guys have ever given your kid, like, your baby, like, a, a lemon to eat? And they're like, Aah! they give, like, that really weird look. Is that just, no? Okay, so everyone, every, every people, we, I, I need you to understand that sometimes as parents, we just do things for the reaction of, of the kid, okay? So I'm just setting that as a foundation. We want. So uh, I was with my kids at Costco uh, the other day, and um, I, I love Halloween because they start putting out all kinds of like creepy things, right? Like it just creepy like things. And, and when you have little kids, it's awesome because little kids, they don't like creepy things. And, and you're trying to teach them to keep your, their head on a swivel to always pay attention. And, and, and this is the best time to teach them that, in my opinion. And so we, we're at Costco. I'm with my little girl. Uh, we're having daddy and daughter time. And, and we're in Costco. And for those of you that have been in Costco at Rona Park recently, there's like this uh, seven-foot Frankenstein statue thing that's there, and he's just, he's a little creepy looking. I'm a grown man, I'm 28, and he's like creepy looking, okay? <laughs> and, uh, and, and so, don't worry about the age. And, um, and so, so, so we're, we're, here we are, we're at Costco, here's the tall Frankenstein, just like freaky looking, and, and I'm pushing the cart, and I see it from afar, and I'm like, oh, Madison will love this. And so, like, I'm trying to distract her because if she sees where I'm going, she, she just won't let me. And so I'm just pushing, I'm pushing, and, and we finally get right in front of the Frankenstein thing. And I'm like, hey, baby, look. Right? She looks. <laughs> she, like, freezes. Like, in, she's, she's ah! <laughs> She, like, she literally, like, she's in the front seat. She, like, grabs onto my arm, just holding tight. Daddy, take me away. Hey, come on, guys. Like, we established the whole lemon thing, okay? It's just a bigger scale. And then, and so, like, I push her away. I push her away. And she's, like, ah! she's, she's, like, freaking out. And in that moment, she says this to me. She says, Daddy, what is it. And I said, baby, it's okay. It's just a plastic figurine. It's, and, and what I did was I helped her see that what, what, it, what it was. Okay? And it's amazing because as soon as I was able to define what it was, she was no longer afraid of it. In fact, because I defined what it was to her, not only was she not afraid of it, but she was like, okay, daddy, let's go see it again. <laughs> see, I think the same is true when we talk about the Holy Spirit. And here's what I mean. We're, we're going to look at who the Holy Spirit is is, but before we look at who the Holy Spirit is, I want to share with you who the Holy Spirit isn't. And the Holy Spirit is not an it. And I believe that when you can understand that Holy Spirit is not an it, it strips away the freakiness that comes with, that, that, that people have associated the Holy Spirit with. In fact, Jesus, when in the verse that we read at the awkward dinner party, uh, Jesus, when he defines that, that, that the Holy Spirit is coming, guess how he does not define the Holy Spirit? He doesn't say, and it will come, and it will be with you forever. But rather, he says, the Holy Spirit, he in him person. And I think that if we can learn to see Holy Spirit not as it, but him, 
that not only will we not be afraid of the Holy Spirit, but dare I say, some of us, we might even draw closer to him and say, wow, I thought it was weird at first, but now I understand who he is. And so my goal this morning is that we are going to define three things that the Holy Spirit is, who he is, and, and I'm hoping that we can just enjoy and really see Holy Spirit for who he truly is. So you guys ready for the journey? So uh, your first blank was Holy Spirit is not in it. But here, who Holy, here is who the Holy Spirit is. Number one, he's my helper. He's my helper. John uh, chapter 16 and verse 7 says this, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. And I love how Jesus sets this up when he says, Nevertheless, I tell you, tell you the truth. Basically, he's saying, Hey, what I'm about to tell you, I know it's hard to believe, but it's true. That's basically what he's saying right there. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper, there he is, the helper will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. And when he has come, he will convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Now, the Holy Spirit, he helps us in so many different ways. He helps comfort us and he helps to lead us. Have you ever had it where the Holy Spirit, he helps give you words to say when you, when you don't know what to say? So many times I'm having coffee with people at the church and they ask me like the hardest questions. And as a pastor, like you, you kind of like half, they expect you to know it or to give them at least a good answer. And every time, like when they're talking, I don't really hear what you're saying. I'm just, but I say, Holy Spirit, give me the words to speak. And somehow it works. Okay, so, so the Holy Spirit is our helper. He helps us in so many ways. But, but this morning, I want us to look at really verse, um, verse 11, or no, excuse me, verse 8. Because I think out of all the ways that the Holy Spirit can help us, uh, Jesus is about to reveal how the Holy Spirit can help us the most. And here it is. This is for your notes. He says this, verse 8, And when he has come, he being the Holy Spirit, he will convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. So three ways the Holy Spirit helps us. He convicts the world of sin, convicts the world of righteousness, convicts the world of judgment. Now, I know what you're thinking right now. John, that is not helpful. John, that, that, that is, that is that, I, like, I want to leave right now. <laughs> But I assure you, as we look at this, like this is to your advantage. And that word convict, could we get that verse eight up there again, please? I'm sorry. That word uh, convict, I know we see that and a lot of us are like, ooh. Because it has like bad connotation, right? Like we think of someone who has been convicted. But really that word convict, it, it, really, um, it really means like belief or persuasion. And so you could even substitute that word convict for convince. Well, John, that still seems very negative and not helpful. Well, I'm glad you said that because I want to help you out this morning. So, um, so again, verse 8, and when he has come, he will convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Now, it's very easy to put a period there. We talked about that last week, but, um, but he has more to say. In verse 9, 10, and 11, as we'll see, Jesus, he actually um, describes and defines what he's talking about in this verse. And so in verse 9, he says, he convicts us of sin because they do not believe in me. Okay, so uh, I was a teacher's aide a while back, back when I was 19, 28 now, so like 11 years ago. And so, um, <laughs> so I, was, I was helping out at, I was a kindergarten aide, right? And here, like I have kids, so, and don't get offended when, when I say this if you have kids, but kids are gross. <laughs> right, like they're dirty. Kids are dirty. Like they pick, scratch, rub things that should not be. And then they grab in their goldfish and like, ah. 
And you're like, sick. And they just, they don't know. They don't understand. And so he, I, I, I'm, I'm a teacher's aide, and I'm helping them out. Uh, and, and I see them, like, just doing gross things with their hands. And, and, and it's snack time, and I'm like, hey, before you contaminate yourself, let me get my Purell, right? Come on. <laughs> get those germs off. And uh, so that you can, so that you can um, have clean hands. And I remember I did that one time, and, and one little boy said, why do I got to do this? My hands are clean. Look. See, I know he, I just saw him pick his nose. And I'm like, no, your hands are not clean, but in fact, they're very dirty. And he's like, oh, they are? I'm like, yes, they're, they're, they're dirty here. Let's, let's use this hand sanitizer and, and clean our hands. And he was like, oh. He, he said something along the lines of, I didn't, I didn't know that just because I can't see it doesn't mean it's not there. And really, this is the heart of what Jesus is trying to get across in verse 9 when he says, um, it's not up there. When he says, uh, he, he's here to convict us of sin because they do not believe. The Holy Spirit helps us see that we're broken. The Holy Spirit helps us see that there are things in our life, holes in our life that we need filled up. The Holy Spirit helps us see, convinces us that there are things in our life that, that, that he wants to help work on. The Holy Spirit helps convict us of sin. Now, here's why that's important. Because just like the kindergartners, if we do not first understand that we are sinful and broken, then we'll never understand that we need a Savior to save us from the brokenness. And so the Holy Spirit, what he does is he helps us to see that we are broken and that we need help. And, and I love what uh, 1 Corinthians 12, 3 says. Uh, Paul writes this, and he says that the Holy Spirit helps draw us to Jesus. And so, though it sounds, though verse 9 sounds very like, ew, he's convicting me of sin, yeah. When you understand that what he's doing is he's drawing us to Jesus because there's hope for us in Jesus, all of a sudden, it doesn't look too bad. And so, so Paul says, uh, he convicts us of sin because they do not believe. Verse 10, he convicts us of righteousness because I go to my Father and you see me no more. Now, if you're not careful, you look at that word righteousness, and it's very easy to think that it says righteous living. And do you understand me? I do believe that the Holy Spirit does draw us to live right. But that's not the context of what Jesus is talking about right there. In fact, the, the context of what Jesus is saying is that he convicts us or he convinces us. He helps us see that when we are drawn to Jesus, when Holy Spirit draws us to Jesus, and he says that, hey, there's, there's, there's things in your life that I want to help you with. He draws us to Jesus. And when he draws us to Jesus, the righteousness right there in which Jesus is referring to is the right standing with God. So then the Holy Spirit, he doesn't just convince us that we're sinful and that we need a Savior. But what he also does is that he helps us see that once we come to Jesus, we now have a right standing with God. We can now boldly go before God and say, God, here I am. We now understand that God doesn't see us through our sin, but he sees us through what we've experienced through Jesus on the cross. And it's through that right standing with God, eventually the Holy Spirit will begin to convict us of the way that we talk, the way that we think, the way that we live. But it first starts inside. And then eventually as we surrender our hearts to Jesus, he then changes everything else. And so the Holy Spirit, he, he convicts us of righteousness because I go to my Father 
and he sees me no more. It's this understanding that Jesus is at the right hand of the Father. And because Jesus is there and I've come to accept who Jesus is in my life, now I know that I can stand before God in right terms, in a right standing. See, all of a sudden, Holy Spirit, man, he, he just, he looks like, wow, thank you for helping me in this. Check this out. Verse 11, so he convicts us of sin, he convicts us of righteousness, and he convicts us of judgment because the ruler of this world is judged. Now, Paul writes in 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 4, he says that the enemy, Satan, the devil, is the ruler of this world. So in essence, Jesus is saying, he's helping us see that the ruler of this world is judged. I got one person that thought it was good. He, he's helping us see that the ruler of this world is judged. Here's what that means for you and for me. That when we come to Jesus and we say, Jesus, I'm a, I am a sinner, I need your help, I need a savior. Holy Spirit draws us to Jesus. When he draws us to Jesus, Holy Spirit helps us see that we now are in right standing with God. And when we are in right standing with God, the Holy Spirit helps us see that because the ruler of this world is judged, that means that the ruler of this world, a.k.a. the enemy, a.k.a. the devil, a.k.a. Satan, he has no authority over me because he's already lost. He's already been judged. And so now all of a sudden I can see that he is my helper because in Jesus I am made right in God's eye. And because I'm made right, because I'm made right, the enemy doesn't have any authority over my life. Come on, that's amazing help. And here's the great part. It doesn't just help uh, the first time, but this is something the Holy Spirit continually does. See, I don't know about you, but I mess up sometimes. And in those moments that I mess up, it's the Holy Spirit who's like, you probably shouldn't have said that. You probably shouldn't have done that. He's helping me see my sin. And in the moment I can say, you're right. I repent of that. God, I'm sorry for doing that. I'm sorry for saying that. And then in that moment, Holy Spirit helps me to, to not be condemned the Bible says there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. And so now I can see, wow, God, I thank you that I'm not condemned. But in fact, I thank you that I made right with God, that I'm in the right standing with God. That, And then, I don't know about you, but whenever I've messed up, the enemy always starts to lie to me. You ain't really changed. You just a fake Christian. You just like that. You you just like everyone else. You're the reason why people don't love religion because you fake. But I love the Holy Spirit because He helps me see that when the enemy starts gnawing and jawing off, that I can say thank you, God, that He is judged and He has no authority over my life. Listen, He wants to help us. It's good news. It's good news. So number one, that was a long number one. <laughs> that could have been the message right there. <laughs> number two, I'm going to try to go quicker. Number two, or so excuse me, number one, he is my helper. Number two, Holy Spirit, he is my friend. He is my friend. Hey, how many of you guys have ever had a friend with benefits? Not that type. Go ahead. You can raise. <laughs> You're like, should I raise my hand? <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Holy Spirit's convicting. Yeah. Like, I think. <laughs> Someone back there, they're like, oh, wait. <laughs> Come on, friend with benefits. I'm not talking about the one that your mind just went to. <laughs> Friend with benefits. I, um, I remember the first party that I went to when I was in high school. Uh, I was like a junior. 
And uh, my buddy was like, hey, let's go to a SSU party. And I'm like, yeah, you know, whatever. We get there and, um, and uh, we, we walk up to the front door and then they had like this bouncer guy that was right in front of the door at a house party. <laughs> and we were like, yo, we're just here for the party. And he's like, do you go to SSU? We're like, yeah. Or it probably was like, yeah, right? Like <laughs> puberty is a pain, man. <laughs> and, um, and, uh, and he's like, you don't go to SSU? And we're like, no, no, yeah, we do. He, and he said something, I don't remember verbatim what he said, but it was something along the lines of, if you come back here, I'm going to pound your face in. And we were like, okay. <laughs> and so I remember sitting in the car, and we're like, like what are we going to do? Like, we can't get in. And then all of a sudden, one of our uh, friends came. came. Uh, it was a girl. And uh, she, she was like, why are you guys in your car? We're like, because we're just hanging out, right? <laughs> like, the party's in here. <laughs> <laughs> and, and we're like, hey, like they won't let us in. They, they won't let us in the party. And she's like, come with me. And we're like, no, it's okay. <laughs> so, she's like, no, no, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. And I remember she, she hooked one of our arms and the other one of our arms. And like, I'm like, <laughs> right? Like, I, I don't want to get my face pounded in. And, and we're, wa- we're walking in, and no joke, come on, hashtag fr- friends with benefits, the bouncer guy was like, hey, he stepped aside and let us walk in. And I was like, hey. <laughs> and it's amazing how you can have friends with benefits, friends that have the ability to get you into places that you can never get on by yourself, friends with benefits, a friend that can help you in situations that only they can get you in and help you with. Friends with benefits. Listen, this morning I want you to understand that Holy Spirit is a friend, but not only is he a friend, but he's a friend with benefits. Holy Spirit is a friend with benefits. Some of y'all are just going to have to process this, okay, because... Because you're still going sexually. And you're like, this is weird. So Jesus, help us. Help our minds. Holy Spirit. He's your friend. And he's your friend with benefits. He, here, here are four ways that, that he is a benefit. Now, if you grew up in church, we would have called this evidence. Right? But I like the word benefits better because evidence sounds freaky. So four benefits that come with this friendship of the Holy Spirit. Here, here's the first one, power. Power. Uh, Jesus said in Acts 1.8, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses, telling people about me everywhere. Hey, listen, one of the benefits of your friend, the Holy Spirit, is he gives you power, specifically, though, to witness. Specifically, for you to be that salt and light that Jesus talks about in Matthew chapter 5. Holy Spirit, he's a friend with benefit, and he gives you power. Here's the second thing he gives us. The second benefit of of the Holy Spirit is love. Romans 5 and verse 5, And this hope will not lead to disappointment, for we know how dearly God loves us, Because he has given us the Holy Spirit to fill our hearts with his love. Paul in 1 Corinthians in chapter 13 is that famous love verse. But what we don't typically realize is that in the verse before and after, Paul is referring, he's talking about spiritual gifts. And then he gets to chapter 13 and he says, but all the gifts, they mean nothing if you don't know how to love. And it's the Holy Spirit that helps us love people. Come on, turn to your neighbor. Be like, you need some more Holy Spirit. Unless it's your spouse, then don't do that. So benefits of the Holy Spirit. Power, love. Here's the third one. Fruit. Fruit. He produces fruit. Galatians chapter 5. But the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, 
kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Listen, he produced, he, we can walk in these things because of the Holy Spirit. Because you have a friend that has benefits. Here's the other thing that, number four, this is the fourth thing that the benefit is that he gives us gifts. Now, please understand that it's plural. He gives us gifts. Not just one gift, but he gives us all gifts. I think, and we're going to talk about this in weeks to come, we focus on one gift when, in fact, Holy Spirit gives us multiple gifts. There's multiple different types of gifts that he's given us, not just one. And so the Holy Spirit, he is a friend with benefits. But here, here's the sad part about it, is that a lot of us, we don't really tap into this idea that he is my friend with benefits. Simply because we've seen or we've heard or we've watched people model Holy Spirit being super weird. And we've looked at it and we're like, man, if that's what it means to have the Holy Spirit, I'm good. See, I grew up in, in church when I was younger, when we lived in Fairfield. I, I, I remember like, and, and here's the thing, if you grew up in church, like where uh, you just saw people do crazy things you don't know that you like you think this is normal right until you bring a friend who doesn't know Jesus and like I want to leave now <laughs> I grew up in, in church where I would just see like the craziest things happen I remember one time when I was little, the pastor, he's up talking. And then all of a sudden, like this pocket of women over there just started, ah, 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 like started laughing. For those of you that grew up in church, you know what I'm talking about. And I'm like, what's going on? I remember Sister Martha coming up to the stage every Sunday, giving us a thou saith the Lord and then passing out on the stage and we have to drag her off. And I'm like, what is going on? And people are like, hey, Holy Spirit's just taking control right now. It's okay. And I'm like, I don't want him to take control of me. I want to say this. Holy Spirit is not weird. You can be normal and still experience the Holy Spirit. You can be normal and still have the Holy Spirit living inside of you. It doesn't have to be weird. No, I do want to say this because I know there's some people in the church who have, they were raised and, and they, they, they're kind of, this is it. This is what church is for me. I do want to say this. Like, I think it's very important that you understand that I believe that the Holy Spirit can show up however he wants. But since that's the case, I also believe that means that the Holy Spirit can show up reverently and that he can show up in order and he could show up in a still small voice. See, I think a lot of the times the things that we've seen, we're like, oh, that's how I know that's the Holy Spirit. And I think we've fallen so much in love with what we've seen from people. We've missed the heart and trueness of the Holy Spirit. Because he's not trying to be weird. He's not trying to freaking, like Holy Spirit's not weird. People are weird. And they can take anything and make it weird. They just chose to be, make it the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Listen, the Holy Spirit is not weird. The fact, like I was really like, oh my gosh, maybe I shouldn't have this series on the Holy Spirit because I think automatically people are like, oh my gosh, it's going to get creepy. It's going to be weird. I'm not going this Sunday because they're talking about the Holy Spirit. Listen, he's not weird. He's your friend. And he's your friend with benefits. 
And he can show up in loud ways and he can show up in quiet ways. Let's not get too caught up with what we view and what we think it means for the Holy Spirit to show up. I've actually had people say that they're not coming to discovery because the Holy Spirit's not here. What they're saying, though, is that the Holy Spirit isn't seen the way that I think it should be seen. Because when they realize that the Holy Spirit is here and there are countless amounts of people's lives who have been changed, it's not been because of the music, it's not been because of the word, but it's because there's been a Holy Spirit who has changed hearts and lives. I'm convinced Holy Spirit can move without us having to be weird. So three benefits, or excuse me, three, or three ways, three things, who is the Holy Spirit? Number one, he is my helper. Number two, he is my friend. And you could put into parentheses, and he's not weird. And number three, he's my God. He is my God. See, I think it's very easy if, if you're here this morning and you were raised in church, it's very easy to say, Father is my God, or Jesus is my God. But if you're here and you're like, it's kind of weird for me to say, Holy Spirit is my God, well, then something's off. Because Holy Spirit is part of the Godhead, right? The, what we call the doctrine of the Trinity, that there's one God, but he coexists as three individual, different, yet indivisible. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. And we see this through scripture. Here's a couple verses. I don't believe they have it on the screen. But John chapter 14 and verse 26. You can just write this down. Hey, come on. Watch this. But when the Father sends the advocate, so there's a Father. When he sends the advocate, there's the Holy Spirit. As my representative, my is Jesus talking. That is the Holy Spirit. He will teach you everything and will remind you of everything I've told you. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. There it is in Scripture. Here, here's another one, John 15 and verse 26. But I will send you the advocate. Advocate's the Holy Spirit. He will come to you from the Father, God, and will testify all about me, Jesus. Here's one where... Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are all at the same place at the exact same time. It's in Luke chapter uh, 3 in verse 21 through 22. I'll read 21 and then uh, there's 22. One day when the crowds were being baptized, Jesus himself was baptized. As he was praying, the heavens opened. And watch this. And the Holy Spirit in bodily form descended on him like a dove. And a voice from heaven said, you are my dearly loved son and you bring me joy. So here's the Holy Spirit. There's Jesus being baptized, and there's God talking. Listen. Father is God, Jesus is God, but I got to tell you, Holy Spirit is God too. I love this. Here's like the biggest like thing that stood out to me is Acts chapter 5. It's this story. It's when the church first started, and um, and. Uh, they, they, they would bring like everything that they had. They would sell their land, bring it all together so that no one was in lack, okay? And, um, and, and there was this couple named uh, Ananias and Sapphira, I believe. I don't have that written down, but if it's not, we'll take it out of the video. And, <laughs> and, um, and so, so here they are, they sell this couple, they sell their land, but rather than bringing it all for everyone to use, they, 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 they pocket some of it and they bring, they bring the rest. Now, that's another message all in itself. Come on, God doesn't like greed. But that's not what I want to show you. Here's verse 3. But Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to who? The Holy Spirit. And then in verse 4, it says, You have not lied to men, but to God. Peter's saying, Holy, you, you didn't just lie 
to man, but you lied to God, you lied to the Holy Spirit. Like Peter's letting us know that Holy Spirit is not an it, he's not a thing, he's not an aura, he's not a mist, he's not a ghost in a white sheet. Come on, Holy Spirit, he is my helper. He is my friend, but more importantly, he is my God. Guys, I want you to know this morning who the Holy Spirit is. I'm really looking forward to this journey that we're going to be going on the next two weeks. I promise you it's going to be great as long as we come with open hearts. And I'm excited 